Alright guys, welcome back to my vlog. I can't remember what number it is, but yeah, this is my week 2 of maintenance. By the way, this is Clinton. And then let's just go straight into it. This week is pretty much the same. I'm literally doing exactly the same thing that I did last week, just making a slight change on the last day. So <clears throat> don't be surprised when you get similar programs from your coaches because part and parcel of progression and programming is just sometimes you just need to repeat and do the same thing and then slowly pacing yourself as we uh, depend on it some people like to bring up the volume some people like to bring up the intensity all right with that said let's just go straight in okay so nothing special here this is day one just gonna the main gist of it is just to go into my heavy singles so yeah so this is my last warm up in a very different angle i suppose it's a it's an angle which i normally don't take because um you know being in a in this angle you can definitely see the mid foot but sometimes some people really cannot get into their mid foot positioning uh but they feel steady and balanced that's the whole idea in a squat you want a lot of stability at the bottom of the squat all right so i suppose this is my top single at 245 yeah, move pretty okay, just a little bit slow. I think what happened on that day was uh, I felt really down. It was a Monday. I rested too much on Sunday. So on Sunday, I literally had nothing to do except for one client and doing some programs. So I laid at home being so sedentary. I lied down. I, I, I lie on my bed for the whole time, literally on the whole for Sunday. So that resulted in a little bit of you know lower back discomfort on Monday but nevertheless I still try to finish it and do a little bit of my 1990 breathing a little bit more focus about it and then it just went off away so sometimes if you come into the gym and then you feel a little bit of discomfort your past injuries coming back in just do some pre-warm ups and then go with the training and try to remember what are the things and the cues that you have um, you have remembered or what uh, coaches have told you and then stick to it all right so bench no more fucking around this is the real uh my old technique my old setup and uh day one bench has been moving quite well yep so trying to understand my leg and shoulder behavior that's why i i'm half naked here um yeah so so far so good so now moving on into day two day two the highlight of it is the deadlift so I kind of messed up here on my daily day today, uh, but we'll come to that later. So let's start with the bench press first. Everything was pretty okay. But what, one thing that I realized is this, I haven't been actually using my legs. My legs has been very, very passive. I'm not actively trying to kick against the, the bench, into the bench. So I didn't realize it until day three. So by the way, this is my deadlift. So why did I mess up is because prior to this video, I have been warming up and messing around with how much slack I can pull before before I even wedge my hips in. So in a stiff leg position, right, when your hips are high, when you're gripping, gripping the bar, so what I did was I pulled so hard that the bar lifts off the floor. It, it felt amazing, it felt, you know, unstoppable, but it's not really good because uh, what it resulted in is the inability to draw my hips into the right position and then have enough quad drive to lift. So as you can see here, my torso is a little bit different. It's more lean forward than before. That's why my 300 look like shit today. But um, I wouldn't say that it's not good because I've learned a, a lesson for myself. Training is all about this, right? You train, you experience the real deal and then you learn from it. So I've learned that I should not mess around. My setup has been really, really good already. All I have to do is to stick to it and get stronger from there. Okay, so this is 260 with three repetitions of hook grip as a punishment set, you know, to tell myself, okay, Clinton, you have messed up now, so you better do those things properly. Okay, so now moving on to day three. So yeah, I'm, I'm only human. Everybody makes mistakes. So I'm on the way to become divine, I guess. So uh every time i step into the gym i try to find something that i can learn a new thing that i can learn and on day three what i learned about is the new spd weightlifting knee sleeves that spd apparel has sent to me i put them on it's so easy to put on and try with the squats and look i can actually <laughs> squat with it so what's the moral of the story maybe i could have squatted even without knee sleeves but honestly speaking i didn't feel any big difference from it so that means that i'm not heavily reliant on knee sleeves 
uh, which makes sense because in a squat it's all about balancing both sides of it it's not just diving your whole weight plus the weight of the bar into the knee sleeves right okay this is 172.5 came out really slow so at this point of time i felt really depressed i'm like hey i want to focus on my bench but why is my bench being so shit and then that's where I realized that, oh shit, and JJ mentioned it, I don't think you are actually using your legs to dig into the bench. Uh, if you don't understand what I mean by this, pay attention and watch my latest, uh, Tenny Matters latest bench press video because we talked about it. So immediately after that, on day four, I practiced it. And so this is day three, you can clearly see my setup. We track and use my foot to really dig. I even shelf my foot in a little bit more to dig myself into the bench and that felt really good and I feel that my arch is higher now. So what, so what that resulted in is a very very stable position at the bottom which I struggled to have in my previous bench press video on day 3. So I hit a top single at 155 I suppose and it felt really really good. So I think that okay, this is the key right here. I'm not focusing and I'm too chill during bench, alright, so right after squats, I'm, you know, too lazy or too complacent about my bench. So one thing to note here for myself is I need to really pay attention and not mess around anymore. This is my last, last deadlift session for the week. Uh, everything pretty okay. I kind of start, I'm starting to dig into the, the shoe, the notorious leaf shoe, which I really enjoy uh, using it as of now. It's not slipping at all. So. Yeah, so this is my week two of maintenance. Even though it's the same program, uh, the intention and everything that I've experienced is a little bit different from the week before. So even though it's the same program, right, I still learn something new each week. So even for me at this level where I've trained for more than about seven years really, I still learn something new. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story here is training is not about, okay, training is not about getting to that one rem max, okay? It, it is part of the reason, but another reason for it is to learn with the hands-on, with the live session on each training day. You'll start to learn something new and then you communicate this with your coach or with your pals or friends who does uh, powerlifting. And then you guys get to realize something cool and interesting which will help in your lifting journey, which will help in your Warrior Max in future. Alright, so this is it for me and I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please like and share. And also subscribe and let more people know about this page because I find that it is pretty useful in a way. If you find that this is not useful, then go ahead, unsubscribe and delete it. Okay, see you. Goodbye.